Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Two Minute Tuesday, the video series, which is rarely ever two minutes, I shouldn't even say rarely, it's never two minutes long and I'm pretty sure that I'm not even gonna release this video on a Tuesday, so I don't really even know what this is at this point. But in today's video, I wanna talk about four hugely important habits that I think I developed from an early age that helped me become a pro footballer. So the first habit that helped me become a pro footballer is establishing my weekly minimums. Ever since I was like 12 years old, 11 years old, I've always looked at my training on a weekly basis and I've always asked myself, how many extra training sessions do I wanna get in this week? How many workouts do I wanna do this week? How much film review or yoga or whatever it is do I wanna do this week? What is the minimum that I would be happy with? And many times throughout my life, I've actually physically gotten a pen and piece of paper and I've written down what my minimums are that I wanna do. And I tape it to the wall of my bedroom or I put it on my bathroom mirror, someplace that I have to look at it every single day and ask myself, am I actually meeting my minimums? You're gonna hear this word minimums a lot in this section, so just be prepared. But I'll give you some examples of my minimums. Every off season for the last like 10 years or so, my minimums have pretty much been the same. I wanna get a minimum of three training sessions per week. That can be individual, small group, partner, whatever, but a minimum of three. I wanna work out in the gym a minimum of two times per week. I wanna do a minimum of a 30 minute yoga session once per week. I wanna write in my journal a minimum of once per week, and I wanna study a minimum of one Premier League match during the week. Those numbers right there are what I have to do every single week in off season, except for when I purposely allot vacation time for either an actual vacation or over some holidays. But almost every single week in off season, I'm doing a minimum of that. Over the last few years, I haven't really been taping that piece of paper on my wall, but I've been writing it in my journal and I've had a journal now for like eight years or so. And if you scroll back all the way through, you'll see my minimums throughout every single off season and even in season as well. And to be honest, there's no real punishment that happens to me if I don't reach those minimums. Nothing happens, I don't get fined or whatever, but I just kind of feel like shit. I just can't check off that box in my journal or wherever of yeah, I did that this week. I will say though that I kind of took this so extreme, especially when I was younger that I would push through some injuries and make some stuff worse. So I will say over the last five years, I've gotten so much smarter and so much better of if something starts to pop up, like a little muscular quad strain while I'm training in off season, I've gotten so good at being like, you know what? Screw my minimums. I'm gonna take care of my body, take this, the rest of the week off, and we'll see how I feel next week. I've also had some really weird minimums in there, like stuff that I wanna do. Like when I was in high school, I had a minimum of sending one personalized, tailored, customized email to one college per week. That was one of my minimums. And that helped me so much because over the course of like 10, 12 weeks now, I've sent off 10, 12, great emails to college coaches. I set those minimums on things that I really wanna stay consistent and dedicated with over the long term. And I think developing that habit of establishing my weekly minimums helped me so much with staying consistent with my training, consistent with my workouts, consistent with everything, and was a huge reason why I eventually played at the Division I college level and then eventually became a pro footballer. The second habit is surrounding myself with like-minded people. Jim Rome, Jim Ron, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his name, and I know I'm gonna get butchered in the comment section, but he said that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with, and I could not agree more with that statement. Throughout my entire life, I think I've kind of just naturally gravitated towards people with positive mindsets, people that are hard workers, and just people that I think are fun to be around. And so I think it's so important for you guys to surround yourself with people that you also wanna be like, whether that's your friends or your training partners, your teammates, whoever it is, take a look at them and ask Ask yourself, do I wanna be like them? Because their habits and their motivation levels and their attitude and their just general view on life is gonna slowly start rubbing off on you. And you want that to positively impact your life. I think the biggest example of becoming the average of the five people you spend the most time with was during college for me. I lived in a big soccer house with five other guys. One of those guys actually ran track. He ran like the 100 meter and 200 meter, but the other five of us were all soccer players. Then out of the five soccer players in that house, one of them was kind of there just more for school and fun and being part of the team, which is totally fine. But there were really four of us that really took our training seriously and wanted to push on to the next level. I remember the four of us like sitting in each other's rooms and talking about like our goals for the season, talking about going on to the professional level, our plans. We did extra training sessions together all the time. We did extra lifts together all the time. We stayed over winter and summer break in our college town so that we could get more training with each other. And we really just pushed each other every single day. I even distinctly remember one day I'm lying in bed, I'm watching The Office, just hanging out in my room doing nothing 
And uh, one of my roommates, Chris, you know, knocks on my door and goes, yo, me and Ramon are gonna go train at the field. Do you wanna come with us? And I was lazy. I was kind of tired. I didn't wanna train. There was nothing wrong with my body. Um, and I was like, you know what, man? I don't, I think I'm good. He's like, okay, bro, you just stay. You watch TV here, me and Ramon are gonna go. And then of course, after he said that, the competitive drive in me, I was like, no, I gotta go with these guys now. And so that's just like one example of surrounding yourself with people that are motivated like that. It rubs off on you. And there's days that Chris or Ramon or Lizzie or whoever it was wasn't feeling it and we had to bring them up. But surrounding yourself with those people just helps so much. And wouldn't you know it, out of the four of us, all four of us ended up signing professional contracts. Chris ended up signing to play professionally in New Zealand and in Australia. Wheezy signed professionally in New Zealand and then with the Sacramento Republic in the USL. Ramon had a great career. He actually retired last year, but he played with Saprissa in Costa Rica. He played in the NASL with Puerto Rico FC. And then he played with countless USL teams in the USL Championship. All three of those guys were guys that I spent most of the time with during my, my college years. And I think they just had a huge positive impact on my career. So I really think that habit was a huge reason why I became a pro. The third habit that helped me become a pro footballer was focusing on progressive overall. Overload. Ever since I was a kid, I've always thought that training should be progressing in difficulty. Again, sometimes I think that attitude is, has hurt me because there's moments where you kind of need to focus on maintenance, like especially during season, and I've tried to make a huge push and that's kind of resulted in injuries. But I think for the most part, that mindset has helped me. I even have a funny story about this, but when I was like 12 years old, I remember sitting there one day randomly when I didn't know anything about anything. And I was like, you know what? It'd be cool to do 100 push-ups in a row. So one random Thursday night in my bedroom at like 10 o'clock at night, I just tested how many push-ups I could do. And I think I got like 22 good, solid push-ups in a row. And then I had this fantastic plan. Every single night, I would do one more push-up and eventually I'd get up to 100 push-ups in a row. I never ended up getting to 100 push-ups in a row because you know, you're training and your body doesn't work that linearly. But still, I think by the end of it, I was doing like 50 plus solid form push-ups in a row. I also weighed probably 55 pounds, but still, that progress was huge. And even though it's a funny story, and even though I failed, it still was eye-opening to see that if I have a goal and I progress a little bit every single day, I can make huge results. Progressing from 20 push-ups in a row to 55 push-ups in a row is a huge accomplishment because I think that only happened in like two months. And as I sit here right now and I look back and I think about that story, I think that mindset is a huge reason as to why I became a pro footballer. Every single workout routine that I was doing in the gym constantly was like, okay, how can I do more weight? How can I make this exercise more difficult? How can I take it up to the next level? When it came to fitness, I wanted to become the fittest that I could possibly get. Even trying out the John Terry cardio fitness. I started off, I think the first time I did it, I did like 11, 12 sets and I thought I wanted to puke. I was upset that I couldn't do the full 15 sets. And then I just kept on doing that workout until I was doing 20 sets of that John Terry cardio fitness routine on the treadmill at even a faster pace than what it was supposed to be. And even with the ball out of the field, you can't progress it as easily in the gym or with a fitness routine, but you can still make a lot of progress to make those workouts and training sessions more difficult. If we're doing a 5v2 rondo and an eight by eight yard grid and we're all taking two touches, eventually I wanna to get to the point where that grid is now seven by seven yards big and we're only taking one touch. In my wall juggling sessions, once I could start to keep the ball up and get you know into the hundreds, now I want to do a specific pattern. I wanna go right in step to right laces, left in step to left laces, right in step to right laces and repeat that. When I was playing two touch with my friends and the rallies were going a little bit too long, it was too easy. Okay, now we can't use thighs or heads or now we have to step back another five yards and really ping it at each other. Every time in my life, I've always tried to set a goal. Once you achieve that, raise the bar a little bit higher. And I think that's a huge reason as to why I became a pro. The fourth and final habit, and honestly, it's kind of a weird one, but it's imagining the 50 year old version of myself. Seriously though, I think this habit is probably the number one reason as to why I became a pro. And I say that because I think it helped me during the toughest, darkest times of my career. Whenever I was cut from a team or turned away from a trial or I had spent you know, month after month in the gym, rehabbing surgery after surgery or whatever it was, I would always take time and I would imagine the 50 year old version of Matt Sheldon. At this point, you know, obviously I'm retired. I have a house, I have a daughter, I have a son, you know, I have my family, I have a mortgage, I'm all grown up. And that 50 year old version of me is looking back at his life and reflecting on the decisions and the choices that he's made. And I always ask myself, you know, would that 50 year old version of me be happy? with the decisions that current 29 year old me is making or 17 year old version of me is making, what would he think of the actions that I'm doing? I'll give you an example of this. 
When I was 23, I had gone on trials in Iceland, trials with Sacramento Republic, trials with Portland Timbers 2, Vancouver Whitecaps 2, and probably 10, 12 teams in Germany and had been turned away for one reason or another. And I was in a really, really tough spot in my life. And I thought, you know what? It's not gonna work out. I'm gonna quit. I talked a lot with my family, talked a lot with my dad, and we kind of just, you know, talked about how the future version of yourself would be so disappointed if you quit when literally you're on the one yard line. You're so close. You're trying out with professional teams. You're getting good feedback, good responses. You're so close. You've even been offered contracts but had them turned away or taken away for, or for one reason or another. How upset do you think 50 year old version of Matt Sheldon would be if you quit right now. Every single day of his life, he's probably regretting that and thinking, you know, what if I just stuck it out for another year? Could I have played pro? Could I have gotten my first professional minutes? Could I have scored my first professional goal? And the answer was always that, yeah, he would have regretted that. He would have been extremely disappointed in 23-year-old Matt Sheldon. And uh, he probably would have had that decision eat at him for his entire life. And so I've done that exercise, like thinking and imagining, you know, the future version of myself all the time. And I, and I started, I think my dad first told me to do that at like 16 years old when I was cut from my uh, A team of my club team. And I think that has just helped me so much because the answer is always that, yeah, he would have regretted if I would have quit playing right now. And I think that, you know what, I'll probably know when it's the right time to retire. When I imagine that future version of, of Matt Sheldon, that 50 year old guy, and he doesn't regret that anymore. He goes, you know what? Yeah, it's probably the right decision to stop now, focus on family, do something else. And then uh, I can retire and I can quit and be at peace with that, you know? But until that day comes, the answer is always just keep training, keep playing, keep working hard. And I'm so happy that my dad and my family was able to instill that, that habit into me of imagining my future self. And I really, really recommend you guys to do it, especially when you're in pretty tough uh, moments of your career. So anyway guys, that is four big habits that help make me a professional footballer. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right guys, peace.